Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, this is In this video, we will discuss about how to compute the share of the surviving spouse as a deduction from the gross estate. So if you're ready, let's start! first video lecture about deductions from the gross estate, we have mentioned that there are three broad types or classes or, or categories of deductions from the gross estate. And these are the ordinary deductions, the special deductions, and of course, the share of the surviving spouse. And we have discussed already the ordinary deductions with the losses, indebtedness, in taxes, the leads, remember? And we have discussed also the transfer for public use and the vanishing deductions and also a brief discussion about family home, standard deduction, and of course the benefits received under RA 4917. Those are the special deductions. Today in this video, we will talk about how to compute the share of the surviving spouse. Okay. For single and unmarried dissident, the computation of estate tax is actually simple and straightforward as there is no need to determine whether the properties left are exclusive or conjugal or communal and there's no need for us to determine whether the deductions are exclusive or conjugal because there is no such thing because the dissident is single okay however for married dissident it might get complicated because there are a few rules that we need to consider when classifying whether the properties are exclusive or conjugal or communal depending on the regimes applicable on their marriage whether conjugal partnership of gains or absolute community of property okay so however for married dissident the share of the surviving spouse the conjugal or communal property is allowed as deduction from the total gross estate to arrive at net taxable estate we need to deduct the share of the spouse from the total gross estate to arrive or to compute the net taxable estate and to have an idea on how to compute this let's have an illustration Juan is married to Maria died living the following properties so we have their family home and this family home was exclusive to Juan and that was 13 million pesos we also have here other exclusive properties and that is 7.6 million pesos we also have communal properties and that is 15 million pesos and there are few deductions claimed we have unpaid obligations 1.5 million we have losses on communal properties which occurred these losses occurred three months after death due to the fire with an insurance of 100,000 pesos so therefore since there is an insurance of 100 we can only claim a loss or losses equivalent to 400,000 pesos that is the loss in excess of the insurance recovery we also have here donation mortis causa to city government of Makari and that is from the exclusive properties of Juan. So of course Juan cannot give up or cannot donate something from the from the conjugal or communal property without the consent of the wife, that Maria. So if there are transfer or donation to third persons, whether to city government or non-government organizations, these properties should of course be coming from the exclusive property of Juan or the dissident. And in this case, that was 780,000 pesos. Okay, so we are going to compute the net taxable estate of Juan given this data. And in the process, we are going to compute the share of the surviving spouse. Okay, so here's the solution. To solve this, we will have three columns. Actually, I prefer to have three columns. One column for exclusive, one column for communal, and one column for the total. So we'll have an idea on classifying whether these properties are exclusive or communal. Okay, so I really suggest you also do this um, technique. 
okay so we have family home and it is said that family home was exclusive to Juan so under exclusive property we also have other exclusive properties and that is 7.6 million pesos and we have communal properties so this 15 million is under communal properties therefore the total gross estate is 20 million 600 under exclusive and 15 million under communal property a total of 35 million 600 okay so that is a total gross estate so after we have computed the gross estate we're now going to compute the deduction so i hope you can still recall those deductions again we have ordinary we have special deductions and under ordinary deductions we have the lit the losses indebtedness in taxes you also have transfer for public use and the vanishing deduction under special deductions we have standard deduction the family home and the benefits received under ra4917 so we will have first the ordinary deductions so we have unpaid obligations so why do we uh, deduct the unpaid obligations under communal properties because as i've said when the obligation is not or untraceable or not directly attributable to any exclusive property then that will be presumed to have been incurred in relation to a communal property we will deduct the 1.5 under the communal property and so again if the deduction cannot be attributed to any exclusive property then that should be under communal property okay so we also have losses on communal properties and this was expressly indicated in the problem that the losses pertain to the communal properties and take note in this case the losses deductible is only 400,000 why because even if the loss the actual loss was 500 but since there was an insurance recovery of 100,000 then we'll only deduct the excess loss which were not covered by the insurance so we also have the transfer for public use and since that was from the exclusive property we will deduct that from the exclusive property so therefore we don't have any vanishing deduction so that this problem will not get complicated so we only have this ordinary deductions the estate after deducting the ordinary deduction is we have here exclusive estate of 19 million 820 and then for communal properties we have 13 million 100 and the total net estate after deducting ordinary deductions we have 32 million 920 so after that we can now claim or we can now deduct special deductions so we will start with the standard deduction so as i have said if you're a resident or a citizen you can deduct 5 million pesos if you are a non-resident alien you can deduct only 500,000 pesos as a standard deduction so we also have family home and take note that the family home was exclusive to who won and the amount there the amount here is 13 million and as we know in our previous lecture we can only deduct a maximum of 10 million right that is why we can only deduct 10 million pesos that is the maximum amount and since there is no benefits received under ra4917 then let's just ignore that and now let's go to the share of the surviving spouse okay by the way the share of the surviving spouse is actually one half of the estate after deducting the ordinary deductions not one half of the 15 million but one half of the share i mean one half of the amount of the estate after deducting the ordinary deductions that is why 13 million 100 divided by two the share of the spouse is six million five hundred fifty thousand pesos okay so we can deduct that from 
the gross estate. So therefore, our net taxable estate is 11,370,000 pesos. This 11,370,000 is the amount, okay, this amount shall be subject now to estate tax, which is 6%. That's it. That's how you compute the net taxable estate. Alternatively, you can actually solve this in this way, okay? 19,820,000, okay? Then you add the 6,550,000, the share of the dissident in the 13,100, and deduct the 5,000,000, deduct the 10,000,000, you will get the same amount, of course, okay? That's how we compute for the share of the spouse. Again, in computing the share, that should be the estate after deducting the ordinary deduction. In this example, the family home is an exclusive property. But what if, what if this is a communal property? What if this family home is a communal property, not an exclusive property? What would be the solution? Okay. So we will go to the next assumption. So again, we will have here, the family home is now under communal property because in this assumption, the family home is communal and not exclusive. So we also have other exclusive properties and that's 7.6 million. And we also have communal properties, it's 15 million. And a total gross estate, we have 7.6 million for the exclusive and 28 million under communal gross estate or a total of 35 million 600. And again, we will have the same um, deductions, unpaid obligations is 1.5 and losses on communal properties and transfer for public use. Take note, there are no changes. There is no change in this uh, portion under the ordinary deduction. What has changed here is only the family home, okay? And then we will have the estate after the ordinary deduction. We have 6.820 and then 26,100 or a total of 32,920,000, okay? So after we have deducted the ordinary deductions, we can now claim special deductions. And we will start with the standard deduction, and that's 5 million. And then you can deduct the family home. Take note in this case, the family home is communal, okay? So therefore, this is owned both by the husband and the wife. So since this is a communal property, we will divide that by two, okay? Divide this by two, and then that is 6,500,000. Compare the amount divided, not to compare the 6,500,000 with the 10 million and select whichever is lower. And we know that it's obviously the 6.5 million is the lower amount. So we can now claim 6.5 million as a deduction from the family home. Take note, in our first assumption, that was 10 million because the assumption back then was that the family home was exclusive, okay? In this case, it's communal. And of course, the share of the spouse. The share of the spouse here is one half of the 26 million 100. So therefore, that's the 13 million and 50,000. Why is it too big or even too high? It's because we have added here the family home as a communal property. Okay, might be asking, what happened to the share of the wife in the family home? Okay, good question. Because we know in this case, the family home the 6.5, this is actually the share of the dissident in the family home. We have deducted 6.5 million here because this is the share of the dissident in the family home as a communal property. How about the share of the spouse? Well, simple. The share of the, of the surviving spouse in the family home is already included in the 13 million and 50,000. The other 6,500 for the surviving spouse is already in the 13 million 
and 50,000. In short, the entire 13 million is not subject to tax. Why? Remember, in our first solution, the maximum amount that could be deducted for family home is only 10 million. And the amount, as we know, it's 13 million. Therefore, there's an excess amount of 3 million taxable. Right? But in this case, since it's communal, the 6 5 from the 13 million is deducted as family home. At the same time, the other 6 5 the share of the spouse is also deducted and included in the 13 million 50 which means that the net taxable estate in this assumption is obviously lower compared to the first solutions that we have why because the 3 million excess in a previous in our previous assumption that was not deducted but in this case, the, basically, essentially, the entire 13 million is deducted. Okay? If you're going to pause this video and go back several minutes ago, you will notice that the net taxable estate in our prior assumption solution was 11370000 But in this case, the net taxable estate is 8370000 which means this assumption, under this assumption, we are lower, our net taxable estate is lower by 3 million pesos. And the reason for that is that the family home here, the entire 13 million is deducted in full. For the 13 million, the 6.5 was deducted as family home. And the other 6-5 was deducted as the share of the spouse. But in our previous discussion, in our previous um solution, only 10 million was deducted because that was exclusive. And therefore, leaving the other excess 3 million part of the net taxable estate. Hence, this solution is lower by 3 million pesos. Okay? So that's it. That's how you compute the share of the surviving spouse and always remember the share of the spouse is always computed as the estate after deducting the ordinary deductions divided by 10. So if you love this video give me a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel please subscribe click the bell so you will be notified whenever I will upload new videos. Bye!